Chill, what you working on over there, man? I'm always working. You find they finally let you out of the they finally let you out of the dungeon. Uh look, man, I'm always working. <laughs> I'm always working. Whoa. What the crap? You're not always working. You're always playing. Uh while your phone's ringing. They That's finally, his friend calling him. So what's up, tech guy? You you didn't have anything ready, huh? And you went ahead and went live and told me to start the podcast. Yeah, man, just- you remember when I said, I'm ready when y'all are. That means um, y'all let me know when you're ready, and then we'll start the podcast. But now, you know, so, so I have to go through and edit all this stuff, which I don't do much anyways. Maybe I'll just leave this in there and not be pissed off, but I'm starting to get a little pissed off right off. Right. You know, I was in a good mood today. You know, I always say it's I was better in to a, be pissed off than pissed off. I on. was in a good mood today. I really was, man. Really relaxed, really chill. You seem like it. I'm going to sit here and say, when y'all are ready, we'll start the podcast. Okay? We Look, start man, the podcast I missed a wire. you're not ready. You ever miss something? No. You ever forgot something? No. Yeah, not when, have plenty of not when my only job is to make sure these freaking cameras I work got a lot here. more other jobs than that. Well, you know, you did seem like you were in a good mood. I rolled up today to your uh, to your abode in the woods, like you like to say. And, you know, you were watching your goats from afar. You were also swiveling your head occasionally looking at your Land Cruiser shining in the distance yes. with the dew on it. And uh, you were in a good mood. And, you know, I was in a good mood, too, even though, you know, I'm the only one that works around here, you know. I mean, I'm always working, man. If you, li- by the way, if you listen to me, all of your dreams will come true, and you'll be rich. And you'll be rich. Yeah, that's um, that's just the way it is. And I don't really know, I don't really know how you could dispute that because the evidence is very clear. Uh, but you know, whatever. I mean, I'll just, uh, I'll just keep doing. I'll just keep my head down and working. You know, just keep grinding because that's what I do. So, yeah, you really do, man. You uh. <laughs> Stay in that dungeon packing them orders. I laugh every time <laughs> I post a truck talk. And my thing on, on the truck talks is at the end of the video, I tell everybody, go buy a hat or buy a T-shirt if you like the show. So I'll post a truck talk, and like within the first hour it comes out, there'll be five or ten people go and buy a hat or a T-shirt. And I laugh so hard because i know chili's having to get down in the dungeon and pack them things so y'all keep buying the hats and the t-shirts well the people are angry at me for two reasons right now for one we're running out of stock on the shirts and i get it i'm well aware that there ain't a lot of shirts in the store right now because it was a huge influx of orders right and i've done place the the reorder but it just all this don't time out right so that's my fault but they're also mad at me our international crowd that I've turned off the international orders. Well, that's been long ago. Oh, yeah, it's been long ago because every time you dag on foreigners, you can't ship it to you. We got problems. So if you want stuff and you live in Italy or Tasmania or uh, the Dominican Republic, well, then you better move to dang America and then I'll give it to you. How what about, about Canada? Shorts? Huh? How about the shorts? You going to restock them? No, man, that's a limited time thing. Oh, okay. You want, run it, you want good shorts with... Yeah, we three of seven, Brandon. We partnered with Barbell, man. That's somebody asked here. Well, yeah, yeah. The shorts ain't coming back. Yeah, so we got to partner with Barbell after the one mile out documentary that they helped us bring to life, and they've got uh, this whole lineup now. Chili's got his shirt on. I got my shorts on, but yeah, that's that ultralight tech tee. All right, so the three of seven project shirts that y'all buy, they're like your everyday around town shirt right if you want to rep the rep the brand which we greatly appreciate but if if you want to get out and get after it you don't want to wear a thick cotton shirt you know when you're out running or biking or whatever whatever y'all do so that's that ultra light tech tee that barbell makes and they branded it with, with that one mile out that is an awesome shirt i wore that shirt quite a bit during cocodona Mm-hmm. And I wore that shirt when I when I rode the Hurricane 300, which is actually 365 miles on my mountain bike, and uh, it functions great, man. It dries out when it 
when when you hang it out to dry. You ever, Blake, you remember that time we hiked to the top of Blood Mountain and we had all that merino wool oh, yeah. clothes on? That crap. <laughs> I have heard people actually say like wool's the best fabric because it it dries out. No, it don't dry out. No. No, it don't dry out. That wool didn't. I mean, yeah, it just don't work. But that ultralight tech tee is a, a great shirt. And then the joggers, y'all know I wore those a bunch during Cocodona when it got nasty and cold and I couldn't move faster than about a, what, a half a mile per hour. <laughs> so I had to have an extra layer on my legs. And then we got the, um, the phantom shorts, these camo shorts, which y'all saw me wear too. And they've got the one mile out branding on them too. Just a good looking short, man. You can. I saw Matt Brown the other day was out feeding his donkey in these shorts, son. He had a Glock <laughs> pistol in the back pocket. Well, he had all kinds of stuff in the front pockets. He said, uh, he said, I figure if them shorts is good enough for Chad to run 250 miles in, I can get out here and feed my donkey in them. <laughs> well, yeah, man, they're good for everything. Yeah, it's just a good all around running, working out, lifting, or just wearing out doing your yard work and crap. They just fit all the bills really well because they do have pockets in them. They're well built. They're sturdy. They got a big, thick waistband with a drawstring so you can tighten them up. That's what I like, pockets. And, and they work really well. So um, if you want some, sure enough, if you're coming out here, if you're coming to run a race or something like that, uh, yeah, get you, get you some of this stuff, man, because it's tried and true. And Barbell went out of their way to partner with us on these on this design. I love the logo, the one mile out logo that they came up with. It's just clean, man. It's just clean. So you guys know Barbell's been an amazing partner. Uh, they make great products. We love them. We've used them hard, son. I'm talking about we put their stuff through the ringer and it has it stood up. Uh, nothing I have from them is falling apart. And I am, buddy, we wear that stuff hard. So check them out. They're good people with a good product. And they're our partners here at 3 of 7 Projects. So check them out at barbellapparel.com. And if you want to rock, rep the 3 of 7 brand, yeah. go buy a T-shirt, Chili, a 3 of 7 T-shirt. Chili's got a daggone order back in. Look, man, I ain't trying to get rich off of selling T-shirts. I just think it's cool that people wear a 3 of 7 T-shirt. I think it's really cool. Yep. Well, since when did I ever think that we would have a community that people would actually want to buy a t-shirt with the, with the taglines or the logo, or I never thought that'd be possible, man. I remember the first time Jesse Itzler bought us our first t-shirt stock. Yeah. And, uh, that's pretty cool. I thought, yeah, this is cool, but I doubt anybody's going to use their hard earned money to buy our t-shirt. And, um, I don't know how many shirts we've probably sold now. I don't even know. It would be thousands, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know the number of shirts. I could probably find out, but dig in the data. Yeah, I mean, it would be in the thousands. It's yeah. unbelievable, man. Thank you guys so much. Every one of you guys that's done that or supported one of our partners. Um, the only way this stuff happens is through collective effort because we're just a bunch of guys here that try to do the best we can. Without you guys supporting us, Coming to train, supporting us on Patreon, buying a hat, buying a T-shirt, getting something from Barbell. It just don't work. That's just the way it works. And we are really blessed to have a awesome community within 307 Project. Like, I think that's the coolest part about 307 Project is we feel like a lot of people feel like they know us, and then we get to get to know people through the live training. You know, how unique is that? Nobody else is doing that, man. I love it, personally. So, yeah, barbellapparel.com. Thanks for placing a new order for shirts, man. <laughs> yeah, well, I should have done that quicker, but, you know, <sighs> these people, man, they're going off the rails. And I am going to break one of my rules. I'm saying this too early. Uh, because you're yeah, pulling the Chad. Yeah. Uh, it's exactly what I'm doing, but 
a lot of you don't get in the habit of that. Well, I'm not going to, but a lot of people were very angry as well that they missed out on the uh, don't be a turd shirts from last time. I just sold out in like a day or I know. And I just want to throw it out there that if you missed out last time, I said we were never going to bring it back again. We might bring it back again. So just stay tuned. That's a really cool shirt designed by David Charbonnet. Yep. Yep. That's David Charbonnet's design. I love that shirt, man. And it's even the color of a turd. <laughs> yeah. What you going to do with that turd, man? Y'all going to get to hear that story here in just a little bit. <laughs> Don't worry. That's a, that's a very unique story. And uh, you'll probably get a good laugh out of it. But yeah, we're happy you're back. It's been a while. Last week I did a solo episode because we made a trip up to Charlotte, North Carolina to pick up this Toyota Land Cruiser. And I actually got a lot more out of that trip than I thought I was going to get. I thought we were just going to go up there and and pick up the truck. But, man, I get a lot out of just being around people who are the expert in whatever it is they're doing. Like, I, I can enjoy being around someone who's an expert quilt maker or an expert basket weaver or whatever. But when you get around people who are just the top at the top of their industry, uh, whatever it is they do, a freaking you can be a beekeeper, whatever, man. There's just something about being around people like that witnessing the the amount of attention to detail the amount of patience um the amount of teamwork that goes into creating something like that land cruiser what i what was cool to me is those guys at TLC they're doing the ex- they're applying the exact same principles in restoring these trucks as I apply out ultra running. I mean, patient, present, deliberate, attention to detail, teamwork, leadership, communication. They're applying all the same things that we apply, but they're applying them to their passion which is restoring these vehicles. And so that was really cool to me. It makes you, it may, it, I guess it made me m- remember that we can all learn things from each other because the principles that are applied are the same across the, <laughs> across the board. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, we made a trip up. We stayed in, uh, where did we stay, Blake? Black Canyon City. Yeah, Black Canyon. Black Canyon City. That was a really cool town, man. Took BK with us. Mm-hmm. Took Blake's daughter with us. Drove up to Black Canyon City. Got oh, to do a hike. Black Mountain. Black Mountain. Black oh, yeah, Black Arizona. Canyon City's in Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> Black Mountain, North Carolina. I was thinking, that don't sound right. <laughs> I know it was black something. Ain't no canyon. That's in... a really cool town. Yeah. Have you ever been there, Chill? I don't think so. In I mean, driven through it. It's just east of Asheville. Yeah. So if you guys are looking for a cool place to go and, you know, have a little vacation, I highly recommend that place. Black Mountain. Not Black Canyon City. Black Mountain. Um, Got a good hike in. Got up the next morning and drove up. And met with Daniel. Now, Daniel is the guy who runs the shop up there. There's two shops in this massive facility. One is called Retro Designs, which basically is all any 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 vehicle, right, Blake? Yeah. I, I mean, so, they yeah. they they're doing Broncos, they they're the layers doing layers and yeah, arrows. Any old classic vehicle restoration. Heck, they had a Lamborghini in there. Yeah. And then 
you had the TLC in there. It's they're, they're kind of meshed together and the TLC kind of focuses on land cruisers. But Daniel, I have to talk, I have to talk about Daniel real quick because this dude, he's an entrepreneur. He started retro designs and now he's running retro designs and TLC. Um, I have to tell the story of how this happened. I, I posted some story on Instagram and this old land cruiser was in the background and TLC hit me up on Instagram and I didn't know it was Daniel. I didn't know anything about him and said, Hey, is that a land cruiser? And I said, yeah, I'm looking for somebody to do the paint and body work. And could y'all help me? He said, yeah, we can help. Well, I figured it was going to be like two or three years out, like everyone else. Because you, you know what, man? Skilled trades are like non-existent. Like, especially skilled trades that require you to work with your hands and and like knowledge that takes a long time to learn and it's passed down and nobody can do this work anymore. All these companies that that do paint and body and auto collision and stuff, they won't touch anything unless it's plug and play. Unless they can just order the 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 fender or the part from the manufacturer and just pull the old one off and put a new one on. That's all they can do. Or the person's not a businessman and knows how to do the work and he's just one guy in the shop. Yeah. Yeah, old shade tree types. Yeah. yeah. So I can't can't find anybody to do this. Now they hit me up. Well, Daniel ends up saying, yeah, man, send me this truck up here in about three weeks. I'm like, okay, well, this is kind of weird. So I was already a little standoffish. I told Daniel, I finally had a phone call with him. I kept thinking, this is kind of weird. So I say, hey, Daniel, will you send me over an email, like kind of a contract, just just letting me know everything that you're going to do that we've agreed upon, like the paint, the body, like give me a line by line of what you're going to do and the price. So that way there's no confusion here because this seems awful weird. He sent it over. So I sent him the truck. The whole time Daniel has the truck, the communication and the customer service is just, unbelievable man the dude every week he's sending me update photos he's telling me what's going on with the truck he's explaining things to me if i have any questions he answers the dang phone talks like a normal human being everything is just clear they're hitting the timelines which the time the dude told me he could do this truck in eight weeks i didn't think that was possible this thing was rough son so i didn't th i had him put that in the contract too <laughs> Because I didn't think it was possible. He's hitting all these timelines. And then as he's sending me these um, these photographs, I'm noticing like, what the crap, man? Uh, that, like, we didn't agree for him to do that extra thing, like a headliner. Like, he sends me over one picture and it's got all brand new carpet in it. Like he sends me over another picture. He's got a brand new grill and headlight bezels. And I, I'm like, whoa. And, and so I'm showing these pictures to, to Blake and dad. And I'm like, look at this dude put a whole new, all new carpet in this thing, man. And they're laughing. They're like, yeah, you're going to go pick that truck up. And he's going to hit you with a bill that's like twice what you guys agreed upon running and up a tab. <laughs> I'm in, just running up a tab and i'm like well i hope not because i have a budget on this thing i sold my my old uh tacoma i sold it to have the money to restore this land cruiser because i really love the land cruiser and um anyways we just go on and on and and i finally messaged daniel and i'm like hey man you realize uh you realize i don't have enough money to afford everything you're doing to this truck right <laughs> we're still on the same page he's like oh yeah don't worry about it man but just the whole process above above the quality of work 
like even mo more impressive than the quality of work, which was absolute perfection. And you don't see anyone putting out perfection anymore. Like you just don't see perfection when it comes to if you have a dude come out and do your drywall, if you have a dude come paint your house, if you have somebody restore your vehicle, you don't see anybody putting out a product that is absolutely perfect. So that was unbelievable. But when you paired that with the quality of like customer service and just the fact that this dude and his team like made me feel really special, I felt really special, man. Like, holy crap, this is above and beyond. And he went above and beyond. And um, then we go to pick it up, and we get to see it all happening. And like, every step of the process. We get to see these skilled tradesmen in there working with their hands. Like, there's one dude in that shop. He sits at a table all day. They bring him parts off the trucks as they tear the vehicle apart to restore it and he sits at a table and cleans hand cleans every single nut bolt part down to the littlest little item like that's the level of attention to detail and you see these guys man just doing what they love and and it just gives you energy and then daniel's awesome just a great guy um, and I don't know it, to, it, to me, it was just really inspiring to be a part of a process like that. And why I say it's inspiring because it inspired me to try to do better at everything that I do in my business. You know what I mean? Like, wow, these guys are setting a high, high standard. And even though they're in a totally different line of work than I'm in, like it inspired me to hold myself and my business to a higher standard. So I thought that was that was really awesome. And um, by the way, these guys don't need my endorsement. <laughs> like they're they're the these guys, this company, Retro Designs and TLC, they are like I didn't know this until about three quarters of the way through the process. They're the gold standard mm -hmm. in what they do. They do not need my well, endorsement. Clearly. They they literally have the, yeah. They they don't need to advertise. Yeah. They they post on social media like once a month or something. And because they don't need to advertise. That's another thing. That's it, that's another <laughs> representation of like when you put out such an amazing product paired with such a high level of service, you don't freaking need social media. You don't need to ask people to give you a shout out because your customer ends up being like me. Yeah. Like, these guys don't have to do any, they don't even have to ask me to talk about this because it was so awesome to see it. And I, they made me feel so good that I'm going to talk about it. Like from now on, if anybody wants a car done, I'm be like, hey, there's only one place you should send this thing. It's here. And that's pretty awesome, man. Uh, so I just wanted to publicly say thank you to everyone who was a part of that. You know, what does that truck mean to me anyways? Why am I so fired up about this, man? I've always been a Toyota guy. I love Toyota because Toyota fits my style, right? Durability over performance. I mean, that's Toyota through and through. <laughs> there ain't a daggone Toyota on the market that, uh, I mean, maybe a race car or something, but this Land Cruiser's got 135 horsepower. You know, my old my old Tacomas, you know, they're weak as grass. They can't pull a greasy string out of a cat's butt. But you can keep them rolling. I'm talking about, you know, now you might have to jerry-rig something. You might have to, but the Joker is going to keep rolling. You might have to pull up on your gear shifter to go in <laughs> yeah. the first or second. I mean, you can keep them going, all right? And so that's what I love about Toyota. And also, when I was a, when I was a kid, 
we coon hunted a lot and we always coon hunted out of these Toyota Tacomas or these Toyota pickups. And that's where I learned how tough these trucks were. You just couldn't destroy them, man. And so I have personally never owned a nice vehicle in my whole life. I've never owned a new vehicle and I've never really had a nice vehicle. I've always treated a vehicle more as a, like a utilitarian type thing, kind of like you Worse do. Than that. Yeah, I mean, you I really <laughs> kind of didn't even treat them like that. You just kind of. I'm pretty rough didn't on them. Give a crap. It's just a hammer, man. I'm pretty rough on them. It's a hammer with wheels. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm just at a place now in my in my life where I wanted to have a nice, classic, kind of rare vehicle for the first time and i've worked really freaking hard since i was about 19 years old i've worked really freaking hard and so this was like a big treat to myself is what it was all about and it's exactly what i want like if i could have said i want one vehicle and I want it to look this way, it's exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. You got anything to say about our trip up there, Blake? Yeah, I mean, really what was, I guess, impressive to me was just the magnitude of the shop. You know, most restoration shops, even if it's legit, like a paint and body shop, they probably got like two or three bays and then like this little office area, you know, 100 square feet or something. But I mean, they had like, 10 lifts in there, this massive uh, paint booth that they could control the temperature in and uh, it had a parts department there with shelves with parts stocked for all different kinds of vehicles. And it was just, uh, it was really cool to see how big and professional it was because <clears throat> restoration is not a professional business. And generally, I mean, it's just more of a, rough kind of ragtag thing at least well, well, any place i've ever been daniel even said it he said everybody thinks they can do this work because they did it with their papa yeah you know yep and so that's what i mean that's you know as far as the the land cruiser and and, and that part of the trip that's what stood out to me was just uh how, i mean they they really have a vehicle manufacturing facility there i mean they can build anything yeah like from the frame to the sheet metal to the engine, everything they could. And it ain't machines doing it. Yeah, that's they're right. doing it by hand. Artisans. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that was really cool to see. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing with. <clears throat> I think sometimes you know when you see a vehicle like that, the the paint work that was done on it, that's kind of what sticks out the most. Like you see it, but there's all those other parts to it too that you. Like, you know, just from the outside, a car goes by. You don't really think about all the detailed work, how many artists, artisans were involved in putting it together, you know? Yeah. But the paint, too. I mean, whoever did that is unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, it's literally perfect. That's pretty wild to see. Yeah. Yeah, and the, I think the other thing that that really filled me up about that whole experience is is just being on the on the receiving end of s someone giving me something like for for nothing because like i said all the extra things that daniel and his team put into this truck it it would probably would have been double what my budget was if i would have had to pay for all of it I don't know, man. It's it's been a it's been a long time since I was on that end. Like we get to give quite often here at Three Seven Project, and we love giving. It was like on um, the treadmill race. I mean, we were able to give, you know, and do something that generated this quarter million dollars, and we were able to collectively present that to David and VIP Neuro Rehab and giving when we did the Mandate Freedom Project, just calling people up, man, and 
and giving four or five thousand dollars a pop to these people who were getting fired from their jobs because of the coronavirus crap. And um, but to be on this end of it, I don't know, man. It's a different feeling. It's real, it's real humbling, I guess. It's just like, why are you why are you doing this for me? Like, I don't deserve this. Why are you doing this? So it was really impactful for me to be on that end of it for once in a in a long time. I don't know, it touched me, man. There's a lot of cool stories behind that, behind that rig already. And uh, I'm thankful for it. So that was that trip. We got back. Let's see. We did did we did we did the rock course before. We went up there. So I got things out of order a little bit. But um, like two days before that, we did ROP, Rite of Passage course, Team 4, which was actually only the second time we've ever done the course, but it was Team 4. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I know how that happened, but I'm not going to tell anybody. Um. Anyways. One, four. Two, three. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Anyways, man, I think that everybody needs to do that course. I think everybody on earth should do that course. I know it's absolutely impossible because, you know, we're, we, we're not going to do that many of them. But, man, so much fruit comes from such a simple freaking exercise and i talked to you guys about it last week on the why are you doing that podcast talked about why i why i personally like that mission so much um but it's just so simple it's like we don't need to put people in the water and make them roll around in sand and make them carry heavy things and make them do all we don't need to do any of that I love the simplicity of it and how that simplicity over a long span of time produces so much fruit in people's lives. But that was a heck of an experience, man. That team was like herding freaking cats. It was excellent. We got a couple of them on here. It was excellent. So uh, I say it was excellent because they they got so... Um, uh, they were on, some of them were on the struggle bus so hard toward the end <laughs> that I didn't get sleepy in the wee hours of the morning <laughs> because I was so busy making sure, uh, everyone stayed alive, I guess. Um, now when you come out and train with us, I, I cannot compensate for you if you do something stupid and hurt yourself, obviously. But I do have your best interest in mind. So if you're really looking poorly, you know, I'm going to be concerned about you. I may not be able to help you, but I'm going to be concerned about you. So my concern for some of those individuals really helped me get through those wee hours of the morning. So where do you guys want to start with recapping the ROP course? Mm, well... I yeah. guess early on, I don't know what any big thing happens real early, though. I mean, when was the first catastrophe? Well, <laughs> well I guess it was Matt, wasn't it? Yeah, it would have been yeah. prob probably Matt. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the first crisis that we, we did end up averting. But Yeah, he wouldn't eat. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, I love watching you guys, man. Because we have such a unique position as as instructors out there. I love being able to stand back and watch you guys when you get deep in the pain cave and you act as if some strange thing has befallen you. <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> like, I feel like total crap. Well, I've been standing here watching you for the last six hours and you've ate 
you know, one bite of a cliff bar yeah. for the last six hours, even though I've been telling you to eat every 30 minutes, you, you've just decided just, you know, you didn't feel like eating. You weren't hungry. Chad doesn't know what the crap he's talking about. I'm going to do what I want to do. And now some strange thing has befallen me <laughs> and I've never felt this way before. So I must be about to die. <laughs> Uh, yeah i think uh i think almost everybody goes through a little bit of that it seems like it's just varying degrees you know and then whenever it whenever it but it's i don't want to say fun but it's uh interesting to watch when it happens in a big degree and you start seeing some carnage especially early on it's it does it makes it I mean, you have to solve problems. It's it's very interesting to watch people go through that that have never went through it, or even that have. But like, it's it's unique. To it's different than anything they've experienced before, or I don't know. So yeah, I think that was the first. Well, it's another, uh, just another testament to that. You you can't learn lessons for people. Yeah. Like you can tell them, hey, you're gonna have to eat while you're out here, and <laughs> it's one of those things like. Uh, he's just saying that's probably a good idea if I do that, but nah, I'm not going to fool with that, really. And then you learn the lesson, and every time from there on, you're going to eat because you say, I'm not going to get to feeling like that again. But you can't <laughs> teach someone. You can tell them what they should do, but they're going to tr- probably go learn it for themselves and say, ah, I ain't got to do that. You know what's funny, though, is uh, maybe it's just things that are difficult to do, but – specifically with what we're talking about the the nutrition side of it like staying on top of your food and hydration you people learn that lesson over and over and over again yeah i don't understand that it's like it does seem like you could learn it once and then you won't make it again but that's not in my experience you learn it 18 different times it seems like people i don't know what the deal with that i know what it is what is it i know exactly what it is what is it the the what what they what they're struggling with it's it's not learning how to eat enough or drink enough they're struggling with doing something they don't want to do well yeah that, that's the that's the part that keeps that keeps them they, they keep making the same mistake over and over and over again is because yeah, people that's... in all areas of their life they cannot come to terms with the fact that sometimes given the nature of the situation, you're going to have to do something you don't want to do. And out on the ROP course, that something you don't want to do looks like you shoving some sugary, nasty tasting snack down your throat and trying to chew it up and then washing it down <laughs> with a bottle of lukewarm creek water. Like, that's what they can't do. And, yeah. and, and likely they're doing that in many aspects of their lives. Yep. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because the lesson actually is learned. It would be incorrect to say it's not. It's just that you start going, well, I remember last time I've gathered all this data from my experience that every time I don't eat, it doesn't work. But. I don't want to eat. I don't want to eat. So I going to see if i can do it if i can just try that and then and, and then they're it, saying i'm feeling fine right now yeah because yeah, i've yeah. been eating so i'll cut yeah. back on no it. that's what it is i mean the lesson is learned after the first time but then you just keep going well but i mean maybe i, I can try this dude i've had so many students come up to me and tell me finally at the toward the end of the mission man i just i finally figured out i had to eat <laughs> and I, I and I and I, the whole when, every time one of them tells me that I'm sitting here like, did you think that I was lying to you? Did, did every 30 minutes when I told you to eat, did you just did you think I was just doing that because it's something that I thought would be fun to do? And like maybe that I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, and it's always mind boggling to me. But hey, that's why we train, man. Dan Burke makes a good point on here. Maybe we should explain what the ROP course is before we dig into it. He doesn't know what it is. What the heck? Where you been, Dan? Well, there's a lot of new listeners all the time on here. The ROP course is 
Rop is short We're for. Supposed to have been here before, Dan. <laughs> yeah, what the crap, Dan? So oh, the the Rob course is is an idea that I came up with. It stands for rite of passage, and it's meant to be a rite of passage for you at whatever stage of life you're in. It's actually meant to be, hopefully, one of the hardest things you've ever done. But it's really simple. Um, it's a it is a twenty four hour movement through the mountains uh just straight movement so the only the only standards at the rop course is that you have to move you have to eat and drink and you can't sit down that's all you have to do mm -hmm. for 24 straight hours and it's done with a team anywhere from 15 to 20 people and yeah that that's that's the ROP course. So really simple, but not that simple when you actually come and try it. So the whole the whole genesis of this idea is I've said for a long time everybody should run a hundred miles, a hundred mile race. Well, that's because a hundred mile race takes you through a full twenty four hour cycle. It has nothing to do with the distance. Well, then I began to look around me and realize, well, there's some people that ain't never gonna run a hundred mile race. But I can give them that same type of experience that I think people need to have. And we don't have to actually go a hundred miles. We just have to go through the full daylight darkness cycle. And it has proved to be true. I was right. And so things like this that we're talking about right here, people say, well, what can I get out of moving for 24 hours at the ROP course that's going to serve me in my life? Well, here's, here's a big one. We just talked about it. Learning how to do the necessary things in order to move you forward, even when you don't want to do them. And then watching how that actually works. You have to practice that, man. That doesn't come natural to weak humans like we all are. It doesn't come natural. You have to practice that. So that's just one thing that you get out of doing something like this. So, that's what the ROP course is, Dan. Poor Dan probably ain't listening. Maybe this is his first show or maybe just a few, and he's like, well, I guess Chad <laughs> thinks I'm supposed to already know this stuff, man. KC Jones said moving for 24 hours hurts his bunions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> he needs yeah. to come out and I do it, I'll tell you what, KC, it's going to hurt more than your bunions, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. That, that, I'm going to tell you, KC, that, there's going to be a time you're going to forget all about them bunions, my friend. You don't have a freaking clue, man. Got that hammer toe. Uh, anyways, yeah, we avoided Matt. Matt picked it up. Yeah, I mean, uh, we just threw him under the bus. I'm just saying he, he was probably the first to really struggle like that. But, I mean, not to give it away, he turned it around like, like really well. Yeah. Really well. I mean, I didn't expect that. That was cool to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was early on. Then uh, at the Narrows, we had the first person drop. Was that the Narrows? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we had one one guy drop, moved on from there. Uh, and then we got to, we got to dinner. Yeah. That's when, I mean, you know, not to skip the first half of the day, but that's when we get. Well, the first half of the day is just the process. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that dinner is when we get to, <laughs> that's when things yeah. start happening. So that's the beautiful, that's the beautiful thing about this mission is it is, it's such a process and like you and most training things and, and even we could design things and, and we do have some things that kind of amp the intensity up way quicker and get in yeah you can i can get you in the pain cave way quicker than 12 freaking hours but you don't get as much out of it man you, like this the cumulative fatigue is way more representative of how life beats you down like dealing with this cumulative fatigue is such a better representation in a training environment of real life 
than having this experience where the the pain and the intensity ramps up right off the bat and then you basically have to taper off from there it, that's that's cool and all and sometimes that might happen in certain situations in life but in general you've got to learn to go through the entire process and endure all this crap on the front end that seems pointless to get you to the place where you're actually experiencing growth right that's the way life works but yeah we get to dinner we hit some hit a good meal of bojangles chicken tenders biscuits and what else did we have was it just chicken tenders and biscuits yeah, yeah and sauce yeah, and all kinds of sauces <laughs> Sweet tea. And uh, well, that was mine. Oh. And so most of these people have never even heard of Bojangles, let alone ate Bojangles after being on their feet for 12 straight hours. <laughs> and let me go ahead and tell you, they couldn't tote it. Jokers could not tote it that Bojangles. It don't settle with everybody quite like it does with me. That just assimilates right into my bloodstream. It, but it does. It does me too, man. Yeah. Uh, whatever. For Here's a tip for all you guys that do endurance sports or you're an inspiring or aspiring endurance athlete. Probably half of the benefit that you're going to get from long efforts in training, half of the benefit is the fact that you condition your digestive system to run off of whatever fuel you put in it. That takes a long time, man. And so these jokers were not conditioned to tote this Bojangles. <laughs> no, apparently not. <laughs> we came we came up the hill out of dinner, darkness set in, and the puking started, son. <laughs> the puking and the crapping started. <laughs> oh they man. On that dirty fuel, wasn't they? <laughs> I don't I mean, honestly, something like this, low intensity, you know, long duration, I think I think that's about perfect, but we might have to uh, change the menu, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't know. I I think it's kind of just, you know, part of it, you know, it's like, yeah, it's true. Look, we've let a little information slip. If you want to order some Bojangles up, <laughs> if you're from up North, you might want to have some ordered up there and go ahead and start getting <laughs> acclimated. Cause that may be what you have, you know? Well, look, yeah, it is kind of part of the training. Like if you basically, if you eat that Bojangles at dinner and then, you know, you start getting sick after it, you, you've found out that you don't have a stomach quite where it needs to be. Yeah. So you've got more work to do when you go home. Yeah. I mean, we're not doing that Chick-fil-A stuff. No, 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 no. Heck no, that no. Peanut oil garbage. No. Yeah. Way too clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Way too clean. We got to run off that. That hard that Toyota can run off boat. You could put a chicken Bojangles finger grease. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. put a chicken finger yeah. in your gas tank. Durability overperformance. Yeah. <laughs> so we get started up this hill. Sunset. It's still hot. By the way, it's hot in the south yeah. right now, man. That's another thing. Yeah, global warming. That's another thing, man. I went riding with Justin Sheely and James Ward the other day. We did a forty-five mile ride. Oh, jo oh, trail trash dirt bag, son. <laughs> that joker tanked. Uh, and he pulled one of those on me as if some strange thing has befallen me here. <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's 98 degrees with a 100% humidity right now. Like, <laughs> what? why are you confused about the way you feel? He's on there. <laughs> Sheely, he's I on know there. he's on here. I know he's on there. That's why I'm taking the liberty to talk some mad crap about him. <laughs> Look, man, this heat is brutal. And during the ROP course, I heard one of the students say about after dark, they said, isn't it supposed to cool down <laughs> at night? No, nah. it's still just as hot at night as it is during the daytime. You got something to say, Blake? You know, I was just, when you mentioned the night, I remember old Greg, he should what is making all that noise? And we told him about them bugs. He's, I've never heard a voice, a uh, noise sound like a Home Depot uh, theft alarm going on. <laughs> That's all about cicadas. Yeah. 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 They're loud as crap. I love cicadas, man. I love the sound they make. But we, we're easing up this hill, and one of our students, Shannon, yep. 
Um, well, one of the other students dropped back to me and said, Hey, uh, Shannon's really having some pukes up here. And I said, all right, let's go up here, Chili. You know, Chili's the medic. And so we ease up there. Let me tell you, man, old Shannon, tough as freaking nails, son. Oh, yeah. Like, she she's walking. We get yeah. up to her. I look over at her, and she's white as a sheet. And she goes mid-stride <laughs> and projectile vomits. Um, Bojangles mush. Like straight out and never even misses a step, son. Nope. Just just clicks them off, turns her head, and just blows it out. <laughs> and I'm like, oh heck yeah, man. I freaking love seeing people puke like that. Mm. Right? Like didn't y'all know how everybody else when they puke, they kind of get in this position, they kind of <laughs> put their hands on their knees and they squat down and yeah, they kind of they kind of yeah, they kind of gag themselves, and I'm like <laughs> I'm like, look, man, if you're going to freaking puke, just puke. But we ain't going to sit here for five minutes because you feel like you got to puke. Puke now or get on your feet and move. That's yeah. the standard. This this lady, don't miss a dang lick, son. Okay? She's over there puking. Chili starts triaging her, you know, get, telling her what she's going to need to do to get through this. And the uh, the first thing I heard her say was, I can do this. Yeah. I can still do this. Yep. Like in the condition she was in, that's all she was thinking yep. was, I can still do this. That was freaking impressive, man. Oh, yeah. I spent some time with her that through the night. She, yeah, she's tough as a cob, man. Ain't no doubt about that. And did everything she needed to do to, to fix it, which, you know, most people in that condition just ain't even all they want to do is dig themselves a hole even more because they're tired of doing the crap that they need to do eating and drinking. I mean, they, they're tired of, you know, she just didn't miss it. Nothing. Yeah. Didn't miss anything. And that's, that ain't easy, man. And I didn't enjoy to watch her puke for the sixth time because I was sitting there going, man, this is ain't like, there's not a way to not be weak after this. I mean, it makes you weak, man. It, you lose, all the calories you would eat, you're dehydrated, you, and you can start trying to fix that, but it, <laughs> you, I mean, you're behind. And yeah, you ain't gonna fix it out there. No, not really. And didn't even matter. Just didn't freaking matter. I loved it. I, <laughs> I loved like, it. I love. I love watching people puke, man. Well, I liked seeing her uh, stay, stay strong throughout it. But I didn't at first. I was thinking, woof, this ain't good. <laughs> but. Like you said, I think the best thing ever, you missed the one that was great when she had, um, and this was the, this was a legendary puking rally. I mean, you hear people talk about that. Not many people even do it when they think they did. This was a truly legendary puking rally and she fought it for a long time, had this spell, went a long way, was eating and drinking. We were trying to do it slowly. I was trying to help her do it slowly so she didn't throw up again. And we got up a little, a little, you know, the climb's long. We kept, we were up there good ways after this. And I just, I see her look to the side and I'm like, huh, what's, what's that? And then here it comes again. And I go, oh man, I was hoping we could keep it down from here on out. But she literally, it was like her left leg went forward, turned her head threw up and without even missing a step, the right leg, then it just took the next step. And then she kept going. And I was like, she literally didn't, didn't even stop. Mm -hmm. And then you said you saw her do that earlier, right? I yeah. mean, I was like, that's unbelievable. I've never seen anybody do that. It was strong, man. <laughs> yeah. It was strong. Yeah. 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 And, no and doubt about that. We get to watch this, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like we get to see this happen. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's even good for me to see stuff like that happen because I'm sitting there. I know what it's like to be in the pain cave, and I'm asking myself, would I keep going the way she's going right now if I was in her shape? I don't know, man. I ain't been in that bad of shape in a long time. You know, it ain't even, ever. It ain't even the fact that she kept going either. It's the fact that she kept doing everything right. Yeah. Because I was up there with her. She was up there worrying about, I mean, not worrying, but 
you know, checking in on her, on her teammate behind her mm -hmm. and, and, you know, still trying to eat and drink and still, you know, being deliberate with her steps. I mean, she th never gave up. No, man. that's another level though, of just not even quitting. That's, that's staying in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a whole nother level, but a lot of people take pride in the fact that they just got through something and didn't quit. I don't really give a crap about that. If you, you can quit and, and finish something, but she didn't quit. She got through it with some style. <laughs> yeah. 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 We got a good comment right here from our boy, Justin Milford. Oh, 10 man. He just got, we're going to talk about you, 10 man. He said he'd give a $50 super chat. And he hey, said, I appreciate that, brother. He said, y'all take it easy on me now. Hashtag 10 man. <laughs> <laughs> the 10 man. He oh. said, I now understand why you eat oily mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> Love y'all. Uh, my life has been changed. Anxiety is non existent. Wait, my wife is still waiting on the other shoe to drop, but it ain't happening. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yep. Yeah, I love hearing I love hearing back from the students and their perspective after it's done because we all part ways, and then I don't really get to see how it impacts these individuals later on when they get home and stuff, and I hope it's doing what it needs to do, but we've gotten to hear from a lot of people after this team, and it's it's um really just confirmed that we're doing the right thing. Uh, and after so after Shannon kind of gets back on her feet, we get attacked by a massive mm -hmm. freaking copperhead. Mm, yeah. And, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, that, that was a, that was a wild situation. That was a mean copperhead, dude. <laughs> like usually they'll just lay there and, and you never even see them. You just walk by them. This joker was coming after. He wanted some. He yeah, was, was coming, striking. Yeah. It was coming after us. And of course, the students, it got really crazy in there, right? They were some of them were running away from the snake, but then the snake would change direction and they were running then towards the snake. Some of them were jumping, some of them just stopped. Finally, I just said, Everybody, just stop. <laughs> and if you happen to be the one that gets bit, you're you're just in trouble. But we're about <laughs> to have four or five people get bit up in here if we keep playing this game. Vicious copper. That joker man. was rough, son. Well, they ain't near as bad as them yellow jackets. Oh no, I'd not. way rather get bit by a copperhead. Are them vicious jacket. squirrels? Yeah, and that was the first part of the day. Yeah, so yeah, that thing was mean. We make make it around that obstacle, get on into the night, and uh, and then it, Shannon is no longer the biggest concern. Who oh, started yeah, she, puking next? <clears throat> well, I mentioned Cash earlier. You know, you talked about how Shannon didn't even put her, you know, she didn't even break stride. Yeah. <laughs> we got to watch Cash. He put his hands on his knees. He sat oh, yeah. there for like a minute trying to. He did the traditional <laughs> puke. Yeah. 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 And I don't know that he got much out that first attempt. No. Nah, he, he wanted to. Yeah. But. Well. Well, he got stung. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, uh, speaking of your vicious yellow jackets, a few people got stung. I think Blake got stung. Yeah, I got stung. I'm going to tell you, if you're going to go in the woods right now in Georgia, you're going to get stung. <laughs> I got stung at your house. Yeah. Another day. You just going to, you slap, just going to get stung. That's just period. <laughs> These freaking yellow jackets, something about this year, the yellow jackets and the wasps are just off the charts, man. They're everywhere. Meaner than they've ever been. <laughs> yeah. I went in, I, I toward the end of the rock course, I went into the woods to take a dump. And uh, these hornets started pouring out of a hollow tree. And they were flying right into my headlamp, pinging me in my face. They're everywhere, I bet dude. you pinched that turd off, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I tore out of there and find me a different spot, man. Oh, man. But um, <clears throat> let's see. We get, we're coming down. We're coming down off the mountain. That's where Tin Man starts locking up. Yep. Elliot. Well, he lost. They all started locking up long before that, but I guess that might have been the height of it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's 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 where Elliot and Tin Man were uh, kind of leapfrogging back and forth. Yeah. They were both well, yeah. in about the same condition. Well, that's when people realize that they'd actually rather be going up a lot of the times when they have their knee and hip trouble. Yeah. They, you know, they can move all right going up, but then the down is rough mm -hmm. well i remember 10 man 
walking and he was so tired he wouldn't even turn around and look so he just calls out is there an instructor around here <laughs> and i said yeah Tin man was stove up man he, he wasn't tired <laughs> he just couldn't move <laughs> i said i'm back here Tin man and he said are my legs gonna keep hurting like this the rest of the time <laughs> i said yep probably so Tin man. there's a high probability <laughs> yep probably so <laughs> Yeah, your condition seems to be permanent. <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh that's where we 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 got to watch Elliot and Tim Man kind of leapfrog with each other and try to figure out what was happening to their bodies. What was happening to their bodies was just a natural process uh um of going through something like that for the first time ever. Nothing wrong with you. Your body's just freaking out, man. It's just a, a natural part when you've when you've never done anything like that before. But it's fun to watch, nonetheless. It's fun to watch people push through that because that's another awesome thing about that mission is even though they looked freaking terrible, if somebody would have just came off the street and seen them the way they were moving... <laughs> They would have called an ambulance, <laughs> right? Uh, but watching them have to work through that and continuing to maintain the standard, which is you just have to keep moving. I don't care how slow you're moving. If you're moving, you're maintaining the standard. Yeah. You know? And so to watch them have to deal with that, that level of discomfort, their bodies all dysregulated and freaking out, and they look like they need to be wheeled off to an emergency room somewhere, but they keep the standard at the forefront of their mind, and they continue to move as fast as they possibly can, and I just love seeing that happen, man. Um, then we get to uh, our next resupply down there. And this is where what you're going to do with that turd comes from. So by this point, there were some members of the team that had lost all, well, most, if not all, sense of humanity. <laughs> um, yeah, we're even talking about the crap in the be best. They became, they were reduced to a very primal state, <laughs> which I, I also like seeing that, but. I think there'll be another standard added to the ROP course now. So now it's going to be you have to uh, you have to move, you have to eat, drink, you can't sit down, and you have to maintain your honor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I think we're going to add a a fourth standard in there. Your have dignity, some sort of dignity. Yeah, <laughs> you have to maintain your honor. <laughs> so. Where uh, I mean, so, it, it's I know twenty four hours is a long time, but that's a <laughs> that ain't that's a little early to be doing that. That ain't that long to turn into a dang animal, man. <laughs> this is why we train, man. This is why we train. This is why we train the way we train is to give people the opportunity to kind of flirt that line to where they're reaching this point where they're so dysregulated that. And by the way, guys, you don't have to get this dysregulated if you show up prepared. But um, getting people to the point where they're having to flirt with this line to where it becomes hard to maintain your honor. It becomes hard to do what's right. You know, it's really, really easy for all of us to walk around in our day-to-day -day lives and do what do the right thing like have some honor about us when there's really nothing bad happening. Uh, where you separate professionals from amateurs is when you look at someone who can continue to do the right things or do what's right, period, when all hell is breaking loose within their own self and, and even around them. You got to practice that, man. You got to feel, you got to see what that feels like. And when you're in the midst of it, 
you might you might do the wrong freaking things. Like you might go over to the side of the parking lot and drop your drawers and take a big freaking dump <laughs> underneath the trail sign. Like you might do that, but it's, 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 I don't want to say it's okay that you do that, but because it's in a training environment, like I expect people to do some of the wrong things. Like I expect people to miss the mark. If they don't, if they do everything right and they don't miss the mark on some things, we're not doing, we're not doing our job. We're not going hard enough, man. That's the, that's the point of it. Right? So I don't ever get mad about this stuff. It's on the individual in the midst of a challenge like this. When you do something wrong, when your honor does slip, it's on the individual to take the lesson away from that, to accept the fact that they did do something wrong and then to make the decision that they're going to tighten up, even in the midst of all the stuff they're feeling, they're going to tighten up and they're going to do better. That's the only way it works. There are no secrets, man. That's why all y'all, all, all y'all think there's some secret, man. Like, how, 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 how do you, how do you go out and do this crazy hard stuff? And most of the time you make it look easy. And pretty much all the time you maintain your honor was well, because you've done it hundreds of times. There's no secret. There's no way to be able to go through something like this and do it perfectly on your first try, unless you've been doing it for years and years and years beforehand. So that's why we train. And so one of our team members took a big fat steamer, as, as James Ward would say, <laughs> in a uh, inappropriate area. And, um, just set his wipes down on top of it. <laughs> one one thing, one thing that we're dedicated to at Three of Seven Project is being very honest with everybody that we are blessed enough to have the opportunity to train. So, in other words, if you do something stupid, we're gonna call you out for it. We're gonna be straight up with you. We might even raise our voice a little bit to let you know that what you did was really screwed up. Um, we're dedicated to that. It's really odd that we do that, though, because I think people in the beginning are caught off guard by that, by like the abrasiveness of it. But ultimately, they end up loving it, and they're like, dang, I wish the guys and girls around me in my day-to-day -day life would call me out like this <laughs> because I'm getting by with a bunch of crap. I'm getting by with doing a bunch of stupid stuff and everybody around me that says they're my friend, they're just letting me do it. They're not saying anything to me. What kind of freak, what kind of friend is that? Right? So, that's the that's the reason why we conduct ourselves the way we do during these training missions. So instructor James calls calls this individual out about letting this turd by the by the sign over there. He rogers up about it immediately. We didn't know who it was. He rogers up immediately, which was impressive, man. Look. There's a huge lesson in that. I'm really proud of him for doing that. Because when you do something freaking stupid at your job, in your personal life, whatever, trust me, I know because I've lived through it. When you do something stupid, the best possible thing, the best possible course of action for you is to roger up immediately, say, yep, that was me. 
to take whatever, accept whatever the repercussions are, and to do your best to fix the problem and to fix yourself moving forward. That's like the best course of action. If you try to hesitate, if you try to make an excuse, if you try to beat around, it, the dude had pl- in this situation, the dude had every excuse in the world. He could say, I just couldn't hold it. I couldn't, I, I couldn't hold it. I just had to, I had to do it. Or, or he didn't even have to say it was him. He didn't have to do any of that. But he made the decision to Roger up, deal with the consequences. And um, even just the feeling of, of looking like a turd in front of your team, right? Like, is what it is. So, I liked that, man. I liked seeing him do that. But anyways, the turd was still there, <laughs> even after he rogered up. So, I'm squatted down in a third world squat over there, eating me a can of um, smoked mackerel on some rich crackers. Jeez. And I just thought, huh, well, the turd's still there. So I just said, hey, hey, buddy, what do you plan to do with that turd? Because it can't stay there. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> I think old Gene's got a good laugh of that. Oh, it's, yeah. uh, it's not every day you get to ask another man what his plans are with a turd. What are your plans to do with that turd? And a few options. Yeah. Yeah, that, <laughs> was, so, that was good. He made it right. <clears throat> I'm proud of him for rogering up with that. Huge, huge moment of growth for him, I'm sure. It's amazing what you can learn from taking a crap under a sign in the woods. Yeah. You can learn a lot from that. That was a lot that happened at that <laughs> resupply point. Yes. I mean, we, that was projectile vomiting. Yeah, yes. By the same one. <laughs> same mean, individual. That was, I mean, geez. Yeah, that was. We had a sitter. Yeah, we had somebody sit down. Yeah. I mean, it, it, man. Yeah, that was an eventful one. That's how you know, man. That's how you know we're, t- we're training right. Yeah. Man, that's how you know we're training right. That's On the it's brink. so rewarding. It just, yeah. Just <laughs> pushing up against. Pushing up against that brink, man. Yeah. And so, yeah, there was a lot happened there. And uh, it was really impressive, though, because <clears throat> the team rallied mainly because of a single individual named Greg. And Greg is this dude that peddles meat <laughs> around the country. He's a meat peddler. He's got a dad bod. Very unassuming. You would never know that this dude was going to be the one <clears throat> to step up, to lead. And a lot of you guys ask me, what does it mean to, what does it mean to lead, man? Uh, you, you, you overcomplicate mm-hmm. what it means to lead. You really do. This dude steps up and leads, and how does he lead? He is he's calling his teammates to a higher standard. He's calling his teammates to maintain the standard. He's encouraging his teammates. He's using his voice. He's he's not thinking about himself. He's got a plan. Yeah. yeah, he's putting together decent plans. Yep. Like, you don't have to be a genius. I mean, the dude had very limited, uh, talking about putting a, together a plan, like, they don't know what's coming. Yeah. Like, he had very limited information to plan on. So he's just calling everybody around him to, hey, guys, let's let's tighten up. Let's meet the standard. Here, here's Here's a way I think we can do it. And he's encouraging the people around him. And he was able to rally them up after that, you know, pretty much catastrophe. <laughs> and um, they went out. They went out as a team and uh, finished the mission strong. They finished strong, which was uh, another just impressive show from that particular team. I thought. Yeah. You know, I watched them when we were 
we were walking that last mile or so. I watched them. Nobody was sleepwalking. Everybody had their heads up. They were maintaining their formation, even <laughs> without talking. And so they they graduated. They graduated well. And I think there was so much fruit that came out of that. And I was so thankful to be a part of it, man. Thanks to everybody out there who has the courage to do something like this. And everybody out there who, I guess, prioritizes their, their desire to become better. Because out of the tens of thousands of people that will listen to this, less than 1% will ever will ever have the courage or will ever have the level of commitment that it takes just to show up to something like this, especially after hearing us talk about it. We're, we're the worst marketers on earth. I don't know how we stay in business. Like, we're just straight honest with you, man. Like, what, what other company is going to come on and talk about what they do in this way? Nobody. It's the worst marketing ever because now the people who are on the fence, I know how y'all are. You're going to be like, ah, yeah, I sure ain't doing that now. Well, that's fine because you're the wrong type of person. Now, you can turn that around. You don't have to be that type of person. But when I hear stuff like this, when I hear about challenges, when I hear about events, when I hear about training, and I, when I hear about it, and and it's really harder than I expected it to be, it makes me want to do it that much more. That's how I am. That's how I'm wired. Personally, it's worked for me. What's up, Chill? Well, I mean, you know, you say you're a bad marketer. I mean, this isn't an attempt at marketing. It's just telling the truth of the of what the ROP course is. And if you're even mildly interested, why would we sit here and paint a rosy picture and act like it's going to be great? And you know, you're probably going to get through it and, and your bunions might get a little sore, but that's it. I mean, no, it's like, this is just what it's going to be like. Uh, and like Chad said earlier, if you want to mitigate some of these issues and dysregulation, train harder before you come. But no, I mean, that's just the reality of the situation. So yeah, if you aren't looking for that, well, then don't sign up. I mean, that would be a grave mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you know, that's probably a bad idea then if you're, if you're just looking for something that is just easy and, you know, you're going to come away with, yeah, some, some mild. There's plenty of that out there. <laughs> yeah. Plenty of those. You could go do a, um, what do they call those obstacle course races? Oh, I don't know. I, Spartan race. Or yeah. Something. Oh, go to a Spartan race. <laughs> well, and you got to baptize three people. Yes. At the end. Yep. We got through, got back, ate some breakfast, got to share the gospel with the team. And, uh, we got to baptize James. James was out there on his birthday. Yeah. yeah. Not James, the instructor, James, the team member, the yeah. student. It was his 30th birthday. I uh, got to baptize James, Garrett. Yep, Garrick. And uh, Garrick. And also Greg. Yep. That was really cool, man. <laughs> Greg, man. That's Old a Greg. dude, isn't it? Old meat yeah. peddler. <laughs> Most unassuming dude. I mean, when you saw Greg, I mean, be, like, what'd you think about Greg when you first saw when you first saw Greg? It's like on the start line of an ultra marathon. You look at these people around you and you think you can guess who's going to make it or not. Sometimes you might be accurate, but there's going to be there's going to be a sleeper in there somewhere. Well, when I first really saw Greg or talked to him, it was the you know, it was Friday evening and I said uh Yeah, and he just we just had this conversation just about just some random stuff or whatever and I was like I, I actually could, you know, what I could tell immediately is that he, he was gonna, he was going to be a good teammate. 
that's what I first thought about Greg. I really could. Like you could yeah. have, you could absolutely tell that very quickly. And then that was bored out by uh, how he did. It, I don't know what time it was, but probably three in the morning when he's basically the only one that is still able to open his mouth. I mean, not the only one. I don't want to discount. Could name off plenty of names, but you know he was taking taking the lead, taking charge, and you can't do that if you're thinking about yourself. Yeah, like you mentioned earlier, he wasn't thinking about himself. Well, yeah, because he couldn't have been. Uh, you, you can't even do what he was doing if you're thinking about yourself. And yeah, I mean, he, he just, he stepped in and really took care of his team. I mean, me and Blake were back there with him for a while coming down off the mountain. And if he hadn't been doing what he was doing, I think it would have looked a lot different. I really do. Yeah. So, yeah. And you know, you know, another thing about him, man, um, he actually cared. Oh yeah. Like, he still cared about the standard. He still cared about the reputation of his team. He actually cared. Yeah. Like that. And that's one thing you can't put into people. No, because most people are going to care until they get to hurting real bad and they don't care anymore. They just care about themselves and finding some way to stop whatever it is they're feeling. And you just don't see that in people a lot. Yep. Well, Greg didn't even know. He's told me multiple times. I didn't know what I was signing up for, <laughs> but this is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I thought I'd show up. And Chad was going to tell us like 10 things we could do to be better. And then we was going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of what it is. Did well, that. it is basically what it is. Yeah. Could have just rented a cabin and went out on some day hikes. <laughs> So, no, it's fun to talk about that. And uh, the reason we talk about these on the podcast is so that uh, we can take the lessons learned from these missions and share it with you guys that weren't able to be there. And um, it would be a waste if we didn't. So that's the whole reason we talk about them on here. And, yeah, so many other stories from there. We couldn't, we can't possibly recap it all. Um other awesome moments of leadership and moments of strength and rallying and tons of other mistakes made and all that. It would be impossible without having each person on here to tell their experience about what they learned and what they went through, because we're only seeing things from a 30,000 foot view. We don't see the, you know, all, every single moment of every, every person's experience out there, obviously. So um, if we missed you, on, in this conversation, don't think that we didn't love you. We just are on a limited amount of time here. And again, we appreciate the opportunity. That's all I got for today. Well, I want, do want to say one other thing. We've had quite a few comments, people just asking about what's going on with you here. And Chad has went goth. And so he's painted his fingernails and, <laughs> It, he's you should see his outfit when he's not coming on the podcast he's got all black on and he he stopped mid fingernail paint for some yeah, reason these are my new tattoos so i yeah. just got i got tattoos that just made me look like i'm dirty yeah he's went goth <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know goth was still a thing yeah man you that's why you're bringing it back <laughs> oh. hey, every every uh toenail and fingernail is was black but he just he tried to remove it all with nail polish remover before he came on but he missed a few yeah <laughs> yeah um all right yeah we'll be headed out soon go out and see nick bear in austin texas and uh we'll be back in the game after that i'll do a little pre-record for you guys on uh this coming up week's episode but if you have something you want me to talk about uh, on, a, on a solo episode for next week, drop it in the comments of this video right here on YouTube. All right. So if you have some things, some questions, if you have any topics you want me to discuss on next week's episode, drop it in the comments of this video and uh, I'll try to hit it. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Enough said.